Hello and welcome back to the Roads of Elden Ring DLC edition. Last time we had a look at the first part of the, what is it called, Gravesite Plain area. And today we will have a look at hopefully the rest of this area. Might be a bit difficult here because there is maybe not a lot on top of here, but there is something. There's some things here. Um, so, we've just arrived to the DLC. We have um, explored the Scorched Ruins. We maybe also have explored the church over here, the forest and um, this nameless mausoleum. And now we have this dude in front of us. It looks very scary and also is very scary. Because normally you don't know how to fight these things and when you hit them you notice you deal no damage and then you're probably getting hit by um, one of their many AoE attacks. So you might want to try this one later. Or I don't know, you're just that good and you jump over or roll through the AoEs and and you get him to stagger once but then you notice oh that did nothing and then either you stop or you keep going and you stagger him for a second time and then you notice so oh, that did nothing as well and either you keep going until ultimately you stagger him the third time when he finally falls over or by then you have given up um, these things are quite frustrating to fight against I think so, not because their attacks are that hard to um, to circumvent or to avoid, but because it takes quite a long time. It also depends on what weapon you are using, because well, weapons that stagger enemies quicker are better against uh, these golems than like light weapons, for example, like like the curved swords. I'm using right now. So it completely depends on the build. Sometimes mages even have it worse or spellcasters in general because yes there are certain spells that stagger a lot or apply a lot of stagger damage whatever you want to call that. Uh, it's fairly difficult at least for a new beginner for for a beginner without any knowledge right if you have the knowledge on how to beat them fine <laughs> i mean i guess that way almost everything in this game is easy but well with these guys you need more knowledge than you need skill so to speak like the skill with your fingers uh, good timings and such but we'll come to that later because there are many many more than just this one. I leave him here because, well, I'm not fighting enemies, am I? Huh. I thought they, they looked a bit better than... <laughs> without the glowing... without the glowing effects on their... On their amber they look much better in my opinion like from far away they look better than from close up which is funny um, but it's an interesting thing they're doing here because they are putting a imposing enemy right in your sight from the beginning because you could have seen or you can see this thing from the very beginning over here The fuck what was that? He was falling. <laughs> um, that's quite an interesting thing. Usually you can't really see what you have to fight at some point. I mean, you can see where you're going, but you don't see the boss lingering in the back like Mesmer is not standing on top of his tower. Or at least I'm not seeing him there. I think this is his tower, the smaller one right here. Yeah. But in this case, you see this burning idiot from from up there and this is not the only one that you can see from far away 
so you can already ready yourself or prepare for that fight. But let's see, let's let's make a big circle around him to not anger him and let's see what we what we have here. Because I think I've missed a certain thing. Um this one for example. I mean technically this is part of this video now. Because this small graveyard over here next to these ruins is quite important just because of this dude over here. Um, these are your crystal lizards in this DLC. If you don't know what a crystal lizard is, this is basically an enemy that you kill to gain certain loot. And in this case it's quite useful loot because this one is dropping you a... Uh, what is it called? Now let's just kill him. A Shadow Tree Fragment, right? That's what it's called. And you need those to level up. Um, do I talk about it now? No, I, I probably... Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about the, about the scaling thing in a separate video. What I think about it. Because it obviously has up and down sides. But let's leave it at that. Over here we see more of the spiral textures or spiral aesthetics. Architecture, that's the word that I was using. Uh, not using, aiming for. So this is not the first time that we see spirals and they become more important. Uh, but for now, these are just interesting landmarks. What their purpose is, I don't know. Like, they seem to mark something somewhat important. So maybe this grave over here, where we also have a few of these weird-looking dudes. These are the horn scent. Or part of the horn scent. They look, they look quite odd, right? Um, but yeah, apparently this place is somewhat important because there are a few of these guys lingering around here. So let's see what this is all about. Here we are getting the backhand blade. Um, let's see. A type of weapon wielded by Hornson for generations. Yeah. Hmm. The style of combat associated with the weapon is marked by spinning slashes and gouging thrust attacks. Well, it doesn't tell us who this person was, but apparently... Well, it's quite obvious that they were part of the Hornsend, otherwise their weapon wouldn't have been here. And all these Hornsend priests or whatever they're called wouldn't be here and then we also have these spirals so he must be someone somewhat important for well, this person must be a somewhat important person but that's about that i kind of wish if you have a place like this that looks i mean it's a landmark it's a it's a minor landmark i would say like a very small one but it's a landmark nonetheless um this doesn't like every the places over there for example they do not look like this this looks like something special but all we're getting is a new weapon i mean sure as a player that's very exciting getting a new weapon specifically a new weapon with a new uh, with a new weapon type <clears throat> that is new to this dlc but <clears throat> i would expect there to be a bit more lore surrounding these weapons and then in this cave we have another painting the sacred tower painting that's not marked uh, where are these paintings there 
A work of a wandering artist, reminiscent of a painting titled The Sacred Tower. Uh, this painting is said to have captured the landscape seen during the last moments of those welcomed into death's embrace. The soul of the painter and vestiges of the dead's last moments can be discovered by visiting the location depicted even now. Hmm. See, this lore is much better than the one of, of the backhand swords, whatever. I feel like this... Yeah, I kind of wish we could full screen that picture. Wow. Well, what we can see is this black mass over there that we can't make out quite yet. And this looks quite ominous, right? Um, I think it's here, it's placed, like this cave is placed like this for a reason. We can already see where where it is. Or at least we can see the the thing that is depicted here, the, the structures that are depicted here. And I think they've made this on purpose. I hope they made this on purpose. Because it's already hinting at this this black mass over there. Eh. I wish I could now make the very right panel disappear. I mean it's not that it's not that obvious. It's kind of hard to see to be honest, but well maybe it's this this part over there, right? So you already get a hint of where to look at. But let's continue. So far there isn't that much level design. Oops, what am I doing? Press the wrong button. So much there's not that much level design, like uh, there's an open field, a very very big open field with a boss inside that we can avoid. And we have a few enemies here and there, but nothing major. Uh, the important things are the painting, the shadow tree fragment, and now the blades. And of course, if you want to beat the boss, the boss. But other than that, nothing really noteworthy here from a level design perspective. It's all very basic. Very Elden Ring basic, I would say. Because like, in the base game we had open areas. We had certainly a few areas where there is a boss that you want to do later, or fight later. Let's see what we have over here. A few more grave birds. Guarding something, what is it? Oh, flowers. Okay, nothing major then. The cool thing about this cliff is that you can see beyond the gap to the other side. You can really see what what is expected or what you can expect. Is if we have a look, we have this structure, whatever this is, we don't know yet. And then in front of the structure we have quite a few enemies and the way <laughs> these soldiers are facing each other, or these creatures facing off with these soldiers, they're probably going to fight at some point. But funnily enough, they're not fighting right now. I mean, it would be distracting because like, you would see their health bars going down and you would think like, what the hell is going on there? So it kind of makes sense that they are not fighting each other. But it looks goofy nonetheless. Them just standing there and looking menacingly. Then we have a few slain ones, which makes sense. A few that got um, left behind. Like the story that is being told here, just from looking at these two factions, even from here, 
Like we can see the main group that is facing towards this place. So they were going to the right from our perspective. And they've already fought, like we, we can see a few dead bodies here. And then over there, I don't know what happened there, like they've split their forces, which is quite odd. This doesn't really add up, like I would expect there to be like maybe two on two or something, but not three on one. Or at least it looks like a three on one right now. Um, let's not read too, uh, read too much into this now. This is part of another video in this series, so let's keep going on this fairly empty plane. Well, this might be a bit... Maybe this is going to be a quick video, or maybe not, because right here there is nothing really. It's just open space. It kind of has a nice feel to it, riding through this empty space. I'm, I'm calling this empty space because, I mean, there's not much to do here, right? You can attack a few goats. And that's it. You're basically just searching for the next thing. For the next interesting thing. And this can be seen as a strength or also as a weakness of an open world game. Um, I see it as, I mean it's kind of hard, it depends on in, in what mood you are. Because sometimes this can be really relaxing, atmospheric, but also, also in, in other ways very boring. So it depends on what type of person you are and like how your mood is, I guess. Sometimes it's boring. Sometimes you just want to have action, like, like in uh, in, in Dark Souls, for example, in, in, in the Dark Souls series. There aren't that many open spaces where there is nothing, really nothing to do. Um, but here there is, and it's something special. Never mind the structures that are loading in. In the background. But man, it really looks like a painting. Huh. We had the first at the first landmark. The cross. Where we are to find our temporary new allies. We are two people standing next to each other, but not really. Like they're one is looking in this direction. And another one is looking in that direction. So they already have established that these do not really get along with each other. Or at least they're not that close. I mean, I guess they're getting along just because of the... of... Uh, what's his name? Mikola's charm. That's the only reason why they're getting along, right? Um, but we have this dude who is, from the looks of it, very alien looking, right? He has this weird mask on, like with these worms or, in this case, caterpillars. And he is a horns, and we can see horns coming out of the, of the top of his head. So he's part of the horns and faction. Um, he looks very poor, or, I mean, everything got burned, so I guess this is what's left of his clothing. And then we have her, who is, well, who looks, and if we, it, I mean, it becomes very clear once we have a look at her weapon, but she is a red main. Like, this weapon looks like very similar to the one uh, that Radan is wielding, dual wielding. And I mean, the aesthetics are fairly, fairly similar. Uh, let's talk to her first then. Huh. 
Lady Leda spoke of you. You're that tarnished. Guided here by kindly Mikola. Won't we all? I am Freya. I once fought alongside General Radan. In battle, you can be sure I'll hold my own. Oh, another thing. Did you speak to our dour little friend? If you've yet to do so, have him give you a map of the Cross's whereabouts. You'll find more of them dotted about these lands. They are Mikola the Kind's footprints. If you've yet to do so, be sure to have our dour little friend share his map of Cross's. Assuming you intend to trace Kind Mikola's path. I mean... She is assuming much here, because, um, what it feels like to me, like, there is not really a big incentive of following these crosses, to be honest. Like, sure, they exist, they, they bear some mildly interesting lore, I guess. Like, carved words, uh, words coalesce, I abandon here the first of the flesh of my body, yeah. I'm not even getting something. Like, sure, there's something over here, a Shadow Tree Fragment, hooray, and then these things, like the, the Empyrean Blood Burgeon, flowers, whatever, are growing around these crosses. Um, but I don't know, the, the reward feels kind of... kind of meh to me. But I mean... Eh, I don't know. I'm not really sold on that. On that whole idea. Uh, but let's talk to Hornsend. Or the Hornsend, the little friend. Fie, another. Treading the heels of Mikela. Then, as that woman would surely say, we are in our purposes well aligned. But understand, your kind are not forgiven. The Earth Tree is my people's enemy. By Marika long betrayed, set aflame. I believe Mikela's apologies when he says our delivery will come, but never will I see your kind as worthy. And yet my oath I cannot overlook. If Mikela it is whom you would seek, then comrade, allow me to give you this. These are the sights of the crosses I found. I urge you, follow after Mikela. As long as you abide by his footfalls, you will be no enemy to me. Huh. Yeah, okay. He gave me a map. Hooray. Three crosses. One is this one, the other one is right through this tunnel, and then another one in this castle over there. Um. I kind of wish he would mark these on, on this map over here. But it's not the case. Um, I urge you, as long as you... Oh, right, no, we can't do that right now. We don't have the scorpion stew right now. Ignore that. If you've yet to do so, be assuming you... Okay. No new dialogue, even from her after talking to him. Very well. So, so far, uh, they're not telling much. Like, she's a red main. He's in Hornsend. He's part of this. Like, he belongs, or he he originates in this in this DLC. Like, he's a DLC character. Freya comes from uh, red main castle, I guess. Like, uh, Caled, or somewhere from from the lands between. Not from the Shadowlands. And they have different goals in mind. Like he already with with the way he's standing, like cross armed, looking somewhere to that castle. Like he's well, he's set out for revenge. I mean and it's necessary not necessarily that clear from this dialogue but he definitely has a different mission in mind or something different in mind than the others maybe and she she wants to go this way 
Um, also not very clear other than she's facing that way. But they would probably fight each other. Wouldn't it be for the charm of Mikela? But now we are at a crossroads, like quite literally. We arrived here from either following the path or going around. Going around the furnace golem, that is. And now we have a few options. If we can if we look at the map. We have the big um, tunnel over here. Which looks very important. I guess. I mean it feels important with the big gate. Right, leading to this area and then ultimately to this area and this uh, black stuff. I don't know. We don't know yet, right? But it leads to this area. Okay. Um, kind of reminiscent. If we have a look at this, it, it, it is kind of reminiscent of um, Stormvale Castle, isn't it? Like the way it looks. Um... No, what is the button? This one, right? If we have a look at Stormvale Castle, we also have this this path here. Then cliffs to either side until you get into the castle itself. We have a moat here. Similar to this, like we have this, this bridge part leading to the castle. We have a moat here and some water here which has nothing to do with the mode but it's kind of odd how it how it's very similar it's also I, I guess it's kind of like um it, it has a similar purpose to Stormvale castle in that it is your first real legacy dungeon your training training dungeon or your easing in dungeon, ease in dungeon I would say. Uh, not not really tutorial dungeon, but like your first this is your first dungeon you're going in, legacy dungeon you're going in. Uh, similar to Stormwell Castle. Like Vari at the very beginning uh, told you to go to Stormwell Castle, right? Like, like that we have a, had our first big roadblock here with Margit. And then, well, Stormback Castle it is. And here it's very similar, like there's not a boss here that fights us, but... Freya's looking in this direction. She feels much more... Not important, but... Um, uh, how do I say it? Like, who would you rather follow? The, the, this woman uh, clad in armor, like a gladiatorial armor or whatever, or the student ragged clothes. Like she is a soldier, he is someone with weird weaponry, right? But this looks imposing, so I guess we, well, and this bridge is a good landmark and it's it's dividing this part so let's stay on this side for now and let's not commit through here let's let's keep going north and see what's up there this is how i would think like um we have the big landmass here that we started in and the bridge is definitely dividing this place from the rest of the dlc for now and this cliff side is also dividing uh, the 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 graveside plain area from whatever this is so let's keep going north let's keep exploring well the the graveside plain area we also have a few uh, interesting landmarks here to explore, at least if we have a look at the map. Because right now we don't really see much, like we have a path here, there might be something interesting underneath the bridge, we can see that we can go down here, then we have a small village over here that might be interesting, we have the lake, 
And maybe, maybe there's something here, like it goes up here. Maybe there's something, maybe there's something over here. So let ex let's explore. What is maybe somewhat well hidden is this place. This little camp. With the Ash of War Savage Lion's Claw. Maybe it's hidden, but maybe it's not, because like it's placed very close to the edge of the cliff here. And what I like to do, and I'm probably not the only one, is I like to uh, stay close to the to the corners of the uh, or the the borders of the map that I can traverse. So because maybe there is a cave on the side or something interesting, right? And usually if there's something in the middle of the road, you can easily see it. Because this might also be another place that you keep going. Like we have a road, let's use the road, right? So you either walk on somewhat the edge of the, of the map or on, in the middle, if we have a road like this. And in this case, they've placed something interesting at the side of the map, which is, well, fairly easy to find. Then, I guess while we are here, we can have a look at what's underneath this, this bridge, but I guess before that, we can see the side of Grace, another one, that is. So let's activate this fairly quickly. And now let's have a look at the options that we have. Of course, we have the lake very close. We have the village very close. But there's something behind us, which is underneath the bridge. So let's check this out. Let's check out what is here. Maybe if it goes down... This is how I would think, like if it goes down into this area down there and then I'm stopping here, I'm, I'm turning back around, but it doesn't really look like it is. And from up there, from the other side of the bridge, we could see that this is a dead end, so uh, you can fairly easily just go here and pick up things. Oh, furnace visage, oh, furnace vis visage. And it looks like it's upgrade material, so... Hooray, thanks for the Arteria leaves. But the Furnace Visages are... In this case, they become more important than the Arteria leaf. Because you need them for... You need them to craft a certain... Item... That you might want to have for your... Adventures later on. But we can't craft these right now, so... Let's just com continue into the abandoned ailing village. Let's see if it's really that abandoned. Here is the side of Grace. This is also the place where the roads road leads to. And I haven't really explored this road here. Like the way it looks. Because in most cases, like we have these two Uh, indents left and right sometimes they're crossing which is fine I guess but um, this is because they're pulling wagons across this road right which is quite interesting now it's quite it's quite nice to see kind of looks like there's some water inside so yeah, it looks very wet must be very rainy here then but let's see what this abandoned ailing village has to offer. First, we have a ghost here. Oh, how it hurts from the very tip to toe. Help me, I must ask, am I human still? Is that the reason I yet suffer so? Huh. And I mean, it's not very abandoned, right? We have these few houses that I'm not going to bitch about. I mean, they could look quite empty, like these windows look very high. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. 
Could be worse, I guess. But then we have a bunch of these flies. And this is where the gameplay problem arises, in my opinion. Because there are so many of these fly-type enemies in this DLC that it's getting quite boring. And e even in a small area like this, they've put like a lot of these enemies inside. Granted, they're not very hard, but that doesn't mean that they have to spam these idiots. And they're not even original, like these are from Dark Souls 3's uh, Ashes of Ariandel DLC, just a reskin, really. But there they also had like flies that could do certain ranged attacks and so on. They just repurposed them and... I mean, just... They repurposed them and gave them another skin and a few different looking attacks, but overall they're the same. Like, it's, a, it's the same skeleton and such. The same rigging. Uh, good thing about this... Oh, good thing about this area is we have another spirit, uh, uh, revert spirit ash, which we can use to power up our spirit summons, torrent included, I guess. Uh, makes torrent more tanky. Let's see. This platform is quite interesting. And we have a talisman over here. So that's basically the extent of the gameplay of this area. It's just a bunch of flies and a few somewhat mildly interesting items. For me, the really interesting items... I mean, the talisman is good. Don't get me wrong. Like, everything that you equip is amazing, but of course weapons and... Um, armor sets are the highlight, I would say. And then we have this dude who likes to buff these flies. Isn't that great? Like two different enemy types we have in here now. Which feels kind of underwhelming, to be honest. From a gameplay perspective. I'm not a fan of flies. And there are going to be a bunch of areas that I'm going to... Uh, be disappointed about because they have so many uninteresting enemy designs in them. Oh, it's not... Uh, don't get me wrong, like, the fly enemy design is not boring. But fighting the same enemy over and over again is boring. The same basic enemy, that is. And I mean, these patrols aren't helping. That's not the exciting enemy type. I am... I'm hyped about. We also have a single hut down here. With... Just a bunch of corpses. Yeah, we get it. People... Have been burned here. Like, this whole village has been burned. Like, the wood is black. This is what Mesmer did here, really. So what is left? Left is the lake. And a few areas here on the side. Notably this area up here. And this establishes a somewhat new way of finding armor. Because we have this altar. And then we have the grave bird armor. And then all the birds become active, I guess. Uh, at least when you when you pick up the armor. And it's the same armor I'm wearing right now. And this is the new armor hunt, because you have to hunt down this armor. This armor set. And it's a five-piece armor set, because there are two different types of armor. Like body armor. Like torso for this uh, th this piece. So I have to hunt down five pieces of that, and it's quite nice. I don't mind that we are not getting the full armor set outright. And then oh, then 
if we keep going. This is what I like to do, by the way. Um, it's already been established, but I like to do the, the edges first, right? And then I'm honing in to the middle. Well, it depends on how, in, uh, how the area looks, but... You can do this very easily here, like either loop around this way, but then you have to go back up, or you loop around this way. Like either clockwise or counterclockwise, I prefer counterclockwise with this area. But here we can already see a... Like, uh, at this point we don't know yet, but uh, the way this area looks, like this dungeon that we see in front of us, it's a, it's a minor dungeon, and we can peek inside um, fairly quickly. But the way this is built, the exterior is being built, we can already tell what kind of dungeon it is without going inside. And yes, we have these white flames. We will do the the jail right here at a different time, not not in this video. I just wanted to activate this uh, side of grace here and let's mark this as unexplored, I guess. Um, but yeah, we if we see a similar entrance to this, like maybe there is a gate on top that could be shut at some point. We see these cages and these uh, spiked fences. Then we know it's a jail. But what kind of jail this is, we will see in a different video. Um, let's keep exploring. Let's see if we see anything from here in the, in the background. What is there to come? Uh, once again, we are very high up. Like, we can't even see the ground or the water, I guess, because this is part of the mode, and this is... kinda weakly illustrated on the map, but this is already part of the ocean. Like, of this part. We're on an island once again, of course, and like the water flows underneath here, so this should be all bright colored and it should go underneath here. Eh, minor details. But no, that doesn't seem to be anything interesting here. So let's have a look at the lake. And in the lake it becomes more interesting once again. Because in a lake we have a strange mount. And we don't really know what this is right now. It looks like a creature that comes to life. And if we have a look closer, very, very close look, we can see it has feathers, okay? There is maybe a, a tail, and then oh, is this a is this a dragon? An undead dragon? And yes, it is. Stop moving, please. Very nice. And this is how the undead dragon here looks like. And oh, it looks very strange. Very strange indeed. Oh no, stop. Don't do that. Oh well. What I find very... Mm, very strange about this kind of dragon, and here we get a great katana. Ooh, new weapon. Um, is this part here, like... The... Stop turning around. The black bits that look like a piece of cloth. Like it's supposed to be skin, I guess. But then, is it really only skin? 
because it, it feels like a black veil, like a black cloth veil being put on top of of the dragon. But then we can see on certain other parts if this one wouldn't turn around all the time. Uh, we can see like it goes over into part of the wings, like here, and it becomes feathery. So I don't recall our dragons having feathers. So this one is even more tied to the deaf bird kind of things. Like these have ghost flame, these use ghost flames or so they are part of the undead faction, let's call them undead faction, like the deaf bird faction. Because they have these feathers and they are using ghost flame which is well part of the faction like the undead I, I call it faction like it's the easiest to call but um but they, they look so weird like here in the eyes it looks like a piece of cloth right like there's a piece of cloth like a veil put on top of his on top of his uh, head but then on the back it becomes this almost animated piece of piece of cloth going into or turning into feathers feather like things and then they wrap around their wings and and so on it's quite it's quite strange but overall they look cool we can also have a look inside and yes this is well this was once a dragon i guess Ugh, kind of looks disgusting. Let's just imagine how hard this would stink or how strong this would stink. Ugh. I don't want to smell that thing. I would probably smell very rotten and then flies would swarm that thing. Ugh. Well, man, <laughs> that... <laughs> Yeah, sure. This doesn't work. These these crosses, right? Y you know what the... Like, these are summoning pools, right? And they're in front of... Usually in front of areas where you might want to co-op. But... I feel like this is the problem, or this is part of the problem of the open world. Where, like, we have... We have the summoning feature here, and it still works like in previous games with... Like in the Dark Souls titles, with you having to find a summon sign and click on the summon sign. And it... It just doesn't work that well, to be honest. Especially not in an open world like this, if you're in the open world. Because there are so many angles from which you can tackle this area for example right like i came from from the side from the left side because i circled around and i would never have, i wouldn't have found this one i wouldn't have found this cross here so nah i feel like for the summoning feature to be noteworthy in this game they would have would need to overhaul it big time maybe similar to bloodborne maybe not no bloodborne had also summon signs right or, or not no they had i don't know i don't think so not only for npcs they had summon signs right um whatever that's been some it's been some time since I've played the last Bloodborne. But we're already through this area. And yes, it was quite quick because there wasn't that to talk about in the first place. But then let's do a quick recap and I guess I'm stopping at this point here. Where I'm, I want to do the recap. So um let's start with the world design we started over here there seemed to be something interesting over here with the way this area looked like with all the spiral 
pillars and and the, the grave turned out just to be a weapon which is quite odd not much lore like we have this big enemy in the middle that we want to go around with the crossroads and then a bit more action up here like with a dragon in the lake with with, with this abandoned ailing village that is quite disappointing um and then we even have a legacy dungeon um which is quite there's quite a lot of stuff here um but you can comb through it fairly quickly um was i starting with world or level design <laughs> i think i turned to level design here so overall the second half is a bit weaker i feel like but you're probably nah it's not weaker I wouldn't call it that. Like you're more into the game right now and less into looking around, I feel like. Oh, that's not true, it's it's fairly early, fairly early in the game as well. Um, well the hard thing is over here where to go next, but I think you either go where you want to go, where where it's where it looks the the most interesting, which would be, in my opinion, like this is the most interesting part. Or maybe you want to just explore. You want to explore this part because you can see it. And you're going directly over the bridge. That would be one option. Or you're taking the approach of let me complete this area first, and then you might do this one first. Um. Or you just go through here. But I think the the cool thing is that the enemy difficulty doesn't really depend on where you go, but how well you collect the shadow tree fragments. Um But again, shadow tree fragments and such is a different story. Um world design wise. Still looks great. You can still see a lot of landmarks that you might want to explore. Ah, this looks just epic. Like, even if you're just staring into a seemingly random direction, this looks so nicely, nicely painted. Like, with this orangey brown of the, of the grass here. Then in contrast with the green with the muted green here and you see part of the bridge like you see the landscape in the background like the structures and all and then this foggy something over there looks quite nice even these tree trees look amazing but i'm getting distracted here um well technically this is also part of the world design so <laughs> um yeah, not much to talk about the world design, to be honest. Like, we have a rundown traveler's rest. Like, okay, we have a building there. We have a small village here that has been burned. We have a leak with a dragon, with an undead dragon here that has ties to the undead faction or the, the grave, grave bird faction, whatever you want to call it. You have the jail. Like, where this looks more like, like it started epic, like this plain area looks very epic with the colors, like this, this, this red, like, the colors are more friendly over here, you can see, you can see the earth, uh, the shadow tree and stuff, and the more you go into this area, it becomes a bit more darker, I feel like. And the theming becomes a bit darker as well, even though the whole theme should be dark here, but like the mood changes, I feel like you don't really have the, the shadow tree in your field of view anymore. Like you are in the shadow of these of these cliffs over here. Yeah, this whole area is very is very dark. Maybe that's the reason why I don't like it. It's like 
or why why uh, or because it feels like no what do i want to say it kind of feels like like uneasy and such because the glow is missing um yeah level design wise because world design i don't know not much to talk about anymore uh, not much new things to say level design wise it's it's the same thing as before nothing has changed really it's still a very open area this time we have a big optional boss in the middle that we can just bypass if it's too hard bypass it come back later no big deal well we have this cross though which is nice we can see uh, we 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 can talk to two new NPCs whose stories we yet have to discover. But then, if we continue, like we did here, there are just a few quick landmarks that we comb through just and then just continue. Nothing, not, not much to, to see here. Like the highlights would probably be the dragon. This is probably the best fight in this area, I would say. Just because I don't like fighting furnace golems, I think they're they're not fun designed. Uh, they're not designed to be fun. But the dragon is quite quite nice. I like fighting dragons. Um, items and like the enemies are basic, like very basic enemies too many flies here then just a bunch of these completely black ghost type enemies like the normal soldier not even soldier like the commoners um a few birds a few horns and dudes over here nothing major though no real like besides beside the bosses who have a health bar there is not really an enemy that is like a, a mini boss in, dis in disguise or a mini mini boss. Like the curse blade, for example, that we that we found right here somewhere. Like the curse blade is quite interesting. Uh, then the dude in the forest is, is quite interesting. Uh, the dude in the church is also quite interesting because we haven't encountered many of these yet, right? Um, but then over here it becomes a bit more relaxed, I should say. Over here just a bunch of flies, very easy to swat them. I guess the dragon is the highlight of this episode, I would say. But yeah, let me know what you think of this part of this area. And I think next time we're going gonna do this part and then also this part over here if we still have time and there's probably enough time uh, i'm already looking forward to that um enough said i think hope you had fun and i see you in the next one goodbye